Hello, hello my lovely friends and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a video about making a very simple junk journal or journal or notebook depending on what you want to call it. Um, I'm going to call these notebooks and I will get to that uh, a little bit later on in the video. Not that it really matters, it's just... <laughs> It's a cover with some paper that I sewed together, that's all. Um, but the twist with today's little project is that I used some Amazon uh, packaging envelope in the cover, like this. I've been thinking about doing this for a while because I've been thinking of obviously different ways to use different things in my journal making process and Amazon envelopes never stop coming right and so I've been thinking about this on and off about how did I want to go about this at the very beginning trying to figure out how to utilize these things in creating junk journal covers in particular and so I've been thinking a lot about um, sewing fabric on them I've been thinking about doing sort of like a collage master board on them. Um, but I thought what I would do just to get us started is print off um, a piece of cardstock. And what I did was I just stamped like crazy all over um, some collage boards uh, already made and designed collage boards that I, I bought on Etsy um, over the past couple years. So in order to sort of make it more mine and to personalize it a little bit, I had a great time with my rubber stamps. When I turn the camera around, I'll show you. And then all I do is I glue this thing in and I zigzag around and I have a cover. So um, I made 13 of these or 14, I can't remember, um, over the weekend. And I will show you in greater detail um, in a minute. But um, because I'm, I made these to either sell, um, some of these I'm going to sell on Etsy, I think maybe, mm, I might try. Or some of them are going to go to a little shop here in town where they sell some of my stuff. Um, but I thought this would just be one of the easiest ways to see how I feel about using this as a cover basically a reinforcement for a cover. So it, everything was going along really well until I figured out that it doesn't, and I should have thought of this, like I was sort of like, oh, I don't know why I didn't think of this before I started down this rabbit hole, but it doesn't, it provides some stability. And I have to admit, I love, I love the soft crinkly feeling of it. I love the sound of these envelopes. I am not going to lie. <laughs> I just, I love this. But I realized that this could be kind of a, annoying to write on, right? Because it's not, it's a little bit bumpy because they've got those little pockets of, of bits and bobs in here. So in order to sort of combat that problem, what I decided to do was I got other cardstock, a little bit uh, heavier cardstock, and I decided that I was going to put two pockets inside, a pocket in the front and the back. And I got some file folders. And not only for, um, because they're cute and they're fun, and I like the, the added color, right? So I put two file folders in the front. And that really helped give it some stability when writing. Um, like I said, it doesn't bother me. But if I'm going to sell these, and hopefully I, I will, um, I wasn't sure how other people would feel about it being so, so soft. Um, and I may or may not be overthinking this <laughs> yet again, right? So I have everything ready to go to show you how to do this. It's, sim it's super simple, and I'm sure I'm not the first person to think to do this. But I thought it would just be a nice sort of let's make a journal together video um, that wouldn't take too long and that is really easy that anybody can do um, who has a sewing machine. I used a zigzag stitch, but you don't have to. 
really I, I use the zigzag stitch a because I love the look of the zigzag I love the texture and I also like the idea that the zigzag around will help keep any of those little bits and bobs that are in the packaging from falling out so there's sort of a, a practical side as well as a, a pretty side for me um, I got my signature ready and I got my pockets with the two-way tape ready and that's it so let's get started and um, yeah I'll show you the journals and that I made so I had a great time I got all my rubber stamps out oh my god it was so much fun it really was a perfect crafting Saturday I highly recommend one day you just get out pretty much every rubber stamp that you own and just stamp until your heart is content. It was great therapy for me, I have to admit. So, okay, anyways, let's turn the camera around and get started. Here we go. Here are all of the journals that I made on the weekend. And yeah, I think they came out great. Oh my goodness, I had so much fun. So, we've got the pocket here. And then some of them I reinforced, not sort of thinking ahead that this would show, even though I put the pocket over top that there would be some of, this is just sticker paper. But I decided not to overthink the whole thing too much and just go ahead and, <laughs> just go ahead and make them. So I've got, so I did it so that, hang on here. So I did purple paper, graph paper, blue paper, graph paper, pink paper, and then purple paper. And so I just sort of went back and forth between the graph paper, the color copy paper, and there's 25 sheets in all of them. And then they all have the, the doily in the middle. So yes, this was, this putting this on was, um, a lot of fun. I had to sort of think a little bit about what I was loading up and where um, as far as bulk goes, but I have to admit I'm really happy with um, how they turned out. And I specifically wanted the file folder to poke out of the top just to give it a little bit more interest. And then in all of them I had it so that the... Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm making sure this is on camera. The little tab was there too. So we've got that one. And then, so I tried to make some that were sort of quote unquote girly and floral. And some like this that I did with these Tim Holt stamps um, that weren't so girly. And I made so many because, um, like I said, I'm gonna try and sell some of these. There's a little shop in town and I love, I love this. I love how this turned out. And so I tried to come up with a bit of a variety. For me, the covers, the covers are sort of that jumping off point as far as piquing people's interest, right? Because if you don't, if they don't like the cover, then chances are they're not going to be super interested in uh, what's inside. And I know they say <laughs> you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. However, it's difficult not to. So, yeah. And so why I decided to call these notebooks and not junk journals was um, because I think that I had taken a whole bunch over to this other place to sell. And they didn't move as well. Oops, I just hit the thing here. They didn't move as well as I had hoped. And I, and I, looking back, I think that the term junk journal confused some people. You know what I mean? Hang on, I'm going to show you. Just one sec. So these are some of the journals that I made last year. And I had taken them to the little cafe. And I made them specifically the size uh, to fit into a traveler's notebook. And I think that they're super cute. So this was the this was uh, one of the ones. 
so I had filled these with different kinds of print, some paper that I printed out, ledger paper, all the favorites, right? Graph papers, some vintage papers. But I think that the problem was that people didn't understand or really know what to do with the term junk journal. And even though I had put a thing on the back explaining what a junk journal was, I think I missed my mark as far as my audience, <laughs> so to speak, goes, right? Like here I had put part scrapbook, part journal, part art journal, blah, 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 blah. Tape it, glue it. Anyways, so I decided that when I was making these, I was going to call these notebooks and not put any of the different kind of paper in, just regular paper for people to make notes. Um, and we'll see where we get that way. The only thing that I, I'm not sure if I'm going to do or not before I, I um, package them up, I was thinking about putting little stamps, like getting out my really tiny rubber stamps and stamping in the corner because I thought that would look really cute and it would be a lot of fun and it would be a nice little added detail but there was a little voice in my head that said don't so let me know what you think if you think that that's something that you would like if you opened up a journal that you were considering purchasing and it had the little stamps there or was that something that you would want to do for yourself so that was something I hadn't decided. Anyways, without any more yapping away, let's get making let's get making our journal. So here I just wanted to show you quickly too. These were some prototypes that I started off with because I had this big idea at the beginning that I wanted to put some hardware on the front. I wanted to have I wanted to have a bunch of things. But then when I put, hang on, let me move this here. So once I started figuring out how this was going to feel and that the writing on it might be a little bit strange, I decided that having an actual book plate on the front was going to be a disaster because it would be too bulky. And even with these in the front, I still thought it might feel a little bit awkward. So I decided not to obviously go with this route um, and to save this for when I'm, save the book plates for when I'm working with covers that are a little bit more sturdy. And same with this. I at one point had the brads in here and I thought, oh, I'll just make a paper label, like a paper book plate, but I decided I didn't like that either. So anyways. Oh, and then I, because I bought, I bought these um, digital book plates, which are great, but I just decided, because I thought, oh, that would look really cool on the front, and it doesn't add any bulk or weight, but in the end, I just decided to print out some labels and then just put the notes on top of that, and it was much more... Uh, smoother and no bulk okay so I just used a regular Amazon envelope I cut them down I got when I opened up this envelope like I just carefully undid the sides I left the bottom and when I flipped it open I could get three of these journals out so that was handy too. Okay, so now we've got So the one thing that I do recommend um, when I was making these journals I was laying everything flat first I hadn't folded anything, I just laid it out flat, I put a little bit of glue stick down and then I zigzagged around, but I found that I was having a little bit of difficulty getting them to fold nicely and getting them to just really get a really good crease in there. 
and some of them had ripped where the zigzag was. Um, these ones are all okay. And this, this I used, I don't know if you can see, where's the other one? I bought really nice linen paper off of Amazon. Here. I don't know if you can see, there's a, a nice, a really nice texture in that. And um, yeah, I really like using that kind of paper. This is, um, I printed it on, I'm trying to think, I'll look it up and see what the weight of this paper is. It's obviously heavier than regular copy paper, but it's not quite cardstock level. So that could be why when I was, I had them down and I was zigzagging around, um, after I went to fold it, a couple of them split a little bit. So it could just be because this paper isn't as thick. So I found that once I creased them quite well, both the cover and the inside, then when I went to stitch around it, I didn't, I didn't have any problems. So I just used my glue stick. Doodly doo 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 like that. And just made sure that tried to get as much as the brown paper lined up as I could. Because I, I like the look of the ripped edges. Okay, and then I'll just do it here, here. Okay, so now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I always start at the back lower. I mean, it doesn't really matter where you start as far as the stitching goes, but I just like to start at the back here and work my way around so that the, the stitching where I start and finish is at the back. But that's just a hangover from dressmaking days, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. Oh no, aha, I missed, I missed, uh, shit. okay, so I didn't quite catch it here. And I'm noticing just a little bit over here. And you can see that I didn't quite catch along here. Not as much as I would like to. Like this is what I wanted it to look like here. Okay, so I had to think about this for a minute or two because even though I glued that down, I didn't like how it didn't catch. So I just thought in the interest of starting over and seeing what would happen. I decided to take this out and I'm not going to use this for this project because I ripped, I ripped it there. And because I was like, oh, I've made the holes in the paper already. So this obviously isn't going to be one that I would take somewhere and try and sell. But I thought, let's just see, let's just use this as a teaching moment and see so I got my bone folder here. So if you're just doing this for yourself and you've made the cover and you really like it and you don't want to give up on it for whatever reason, I don't, you know, just press the holes down with your bone folder. And it's almost like you can't even see them. I mean, I know it's just paper, but if it was the kind of thing where you had spent quite a bit of time, f you know, doing something for it, and you really did want to salvage it, and you don't want to give up on it, I think this is completely reasonable to just do this. So we're going to cut another back. Okay, so now we're going to recut this. Let's 
and I'm going to have just a tiny little bit of the packaging sticking out so that the stuff that's inside, like these little bits and bobs here, don't come flying out. Oops. And here. Okay. There we go. So I want the recycle, I want the text and everything to be on the inside. Get like this. All right. Okay, so that is poking out a little bit too much there, so let's just trim that. And same with the back here. There. That'll be good. Mm. Is that? Yeah. Okay, so here we go again. <coughs> A little bit of glue stick. just to help hold it in place and while I'm also to hold it while I'm sewing and stitching it around and then let's do the back okay now <laughs> let's see what happens Okay, so this turned out much, much better. I'm, this is great. So I didn't, I didn't miss anything this time. And yeah, I'm very happy with that. So I'm glad that I took the time to uh, cut a new back and redo that. Okay, so now let's put on the pockets on the back here. Yeah, those are going to look really nice. This gorgeous paper I got on Etsy from um, a shop called Two Oranges. I will leave the link down below. So now I'm just going to put... Uh, which one did I do first? I believe I did the red. Yeah, I put the colored folder in. And like I said, I like having this little tab to stick out the top so that if somebody wanted to put another label on there or something, I think that's super fun. And then the manila one with the little tab sticking up. And then I've got my 25 pages here, my signature. And I just need um, my label thing to go in the middle. I love putting these uh, printed doilies in the middle. I think they're so, so cute. I got my pokey tool and I already have my needle and wax thread here all ready to go. So we're just going to do a very simple three hole pamphlet stitch. And so first, right in the middle, there we go. And then down here, and one up here, okay, so then this is how I like to do it. You might see there's a couple variations, but
but it all gets you to the same place. It's just a personal preference, really. So out through the center. And then I like to, I don't know why, but I like to go through the bottom there. Hopefully you don't have to fight with it too much. <laughs> then some people go, <coughs> excuse me, up to the top and then come around and back. I, again, I don't know why, but I like to do it this way. And you're going to go back into the middle. Very careful not to get your needle stuck in the middle of the thread that you've already put through there. And then back through here. There's a little hole there. And sometimes this is a bit fiddly. So then what I usually do is just come back with my pokey tool here. There we go. And underneath. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I don't know why it popped into my brain, but as I was making the knot, I was thinking, I remember this from brownies, so show of hands. <laughs> Anybody else who remembers this? When, when I was a brownie a hundred years ago, we wore the full, like, uniform with the, the dress and the, the tie and the little brown beret and the, the pouch on our belt with the pencil. Oh my god, I loved it. Anyways, when we were learning how to tie our ties, it was left over right and under and then right over left and under. And to the day I die, I will never forget that. <laughs> how to tie that knot. It was such a big deal to get the scarf and the, oh my god, and then there. So there, that's good, that's good. Okay, I'm very happy with this cover. You know what, you might not, oh, you can sort of see some of my original holes. Well, we'll just play with that later. Okay, so now because I really like the look and the texture of ripped pages. I'm going to rip these to fit. One of the reasons why I also liked like to do teared um, pages and paid uh, ripped edges is because if you make a little bit of a mistake or things you know if, if something turns out and it's not quite straight you know you can sort of hide hide the odd mistake with some ripped edges so I mean first and foremost I like it because it, it just I think it makes the page look a little bit interesting but I've also been known to use it to hide <laughs> the odd thing that maybe I did that I shouldn't have. But anyways, I really do like the combination of the graph paper with the copy paper. And I'm curious to see if, if calling these, these books notebooks and not junk journals. I mean, it, it really, I mean, it's just a name, right? It's just a... Like anything else, it's just a label. It doesn't mean that you have to... It, if you call it a junk journal, that it has to be a junk journal. I mean, plenty of people just go to a regular stationery store and buy a regular, ordinary notebook and turn it into a work of art, whether it's an art journal, junk journal, scrapbook, whatever, right? But I, I sort of got into a place where I forgot that not everybody knows what a junk journal is, knows what to do with a junk journal. Like, you know, sometimes you just, you just sort of forget that everybody isn't on the same sort of wavelength that we are. And I know there's still a lot of, you know, there can be still a lot of confusion out there about what is a junk journal. 
And I, I think we get kind of hung up on the semantics of it, the rules of it. You know what I mean? Because when you look at there's so many videos out there about what is a junk journal and how do you use a junk journal and all of that kind of thing, right? So, I mean, really, it's just a way of documenting stuff. You know, like for a while we called them smash books. And everybody was like, oh, you just smash the stuff in, right? Just smash it in. <laughs> I love that. I had a couple of those books, and I thought they were a lot of fun because there was no rules to the whole thing. Okay, so now we're pretty much at the home stretch. All I have to do is just put in the grommet there, and I have my elastic. Um... I had it here. I think Lucy decided that she was going to have some fun with it. Oh, here we go. So, I have my proper dial. And I'm going to get out an eyelet. Or a grommet. Okay, so let me just get rid of some of that stuff there. And we'll put in our hole. So the other thing is when you're doing, if you're going to put an eyelet in, just to make sure that you don't pierce your stitching uh, so that it doesn't unravel on you later. Unless you like that look, then by all means, go right ahead. Okay, and let's there we go! And now our elastic. So, I have to say, I am... I really like this idea of being able to use this Amazon packaging for these. There's something for me about a soft cover uh, notebook. I love buying soft cover notebooks. Um, and, I, like I said before, I love the sound. There's something very satisfying about that sound. Um, and then just wrap it around. And there you have it. I think this is a great way... First of all, it's, it's simple, it's fast, it's easily accept, uh, accessible. Right? We all have these Amazon ones. I haven't tried it with one of those blue and white plastic ones, but I might... I might try one with the bubble mailer just for fun, just to see what it feels like, just to see what, how it feels in the hand and what it's like to write in it. Um, but I, I also think it would be fun to, I'm going to take one of these and we'll do a video and I'll play around with fabric. We'll do fabric strips. Um, I'm not sure, I, I, you know what we could, we could do? We could do one side where I glue down fabric and then one side where we stitch it down and see what it looks like because, I mean, the, the danger, of course, is if there's too many holes from the stitching, then eventually this is going to pull apart, right? Um, I also thought it would be fun to, actual, to do an actual collage of different papers and gluing different things on here and just seeing how well it sticks. Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of potential here to do some, some fun experimenting and to see where we get. Because for me personally, you know, I never have trouble putting something into a junk journal, but I do, I'm always looking for interesting ways to make interesting covers, right? Um, so yeah, so that was one of the reasons why I was really happy to find this this paper because I thought this linen paper just gave such an interesting texture. Especially when I printed it on... Here, let's open up this one real quick just before I go. I printed these ones out with um, wallpaper. So I love the, I love the wallpaper on this textured linen paper. Yeah, I should have paper geek alert. 
<laughs> warning, warning. I'm gushing over textured paper. Yeah. Anyhow, that's it. That's what we did. So I hope that will inspire you to give it a shot. See what you think. And um, let me know if you give this a go and how it works out for you. And that's it. That's it for me today. So thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for your support and your very kind comments. And um, yeah, speak kindly to yourselves and I will talk to everybody soon. Mwah. Take care. See you later. Bye.